Here is a velocity analysis problem. We have been given this mechanism with all the relevant link lengths, dimensions, angles and the angular velocity of one of the links to analyze. The new thing here is this swivel joint which has two degrees of freedom allowing the sliding of this link through it and also the change of orientation or rotation of this link. It can also be viewed as two separate joints with one degree of freedom each and an extra link shown here in green so that this is sliding with respect to this green link and the green link itself is rotating within this purple circle. Of course any which way we look at it the mobility remains the same so we can view it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 bar with a 2 degree of freedom joint or a 8 bar with all 1 degree of freedom joints. Uh, this is how the mobility can be calculated and since this is 1 degree of freedom mechanism we will be able to find all the velocities knowing just one of them. We start the velocity diagram as usual by plotting the fixed points. Here there is O, C and we have taken one extra point, uh, the point F, which is on the fixed link. It coincides with a point E, which is on this moving link, which is sliding as well as rotating with respect to this swivel. Next, we can plot the velocity of A, which will be perpendicular to OA and magnitude will be OA into omega and the sense will be upward like this. So this is a velocity image of point A. The velocity image of B will be uh, the intersection of two loci, one relative to A, which will be perpendicular to AB and one relative to C, which will be perpendicular to BC. So wherever they intersect, we locate the velocity image of point B. Image of point D can be obtained by transferring the ratio in which it divides this link AB to the velocity image AB over here, like this. From D, we can move to this point E on link DG. Its motion will be perpendicular to ED relative to D. So from D, we plot a line perpendicular to DE and relative to its coincident point F the motion will be sliding along this direction. So from F we can draw uh, a line along the sliding uh, velocity and wherever these two loci intersect we locate point E. Then we can extrapolate DE up to G in a certain uh, proportion like this and get the velocity image of G. To get velocity image of H, again we'll use two loci, one relative to the fixed guide which will be horizontal and one relative to point G which will be perpendicular to GH this way. They intersect over here and that is where uh, the point H will be located. So we have all the velocities because all the points in the configuration diagram are now mapped to their respective images in the velocity diagram. Now all the linear velocities can be read off from the velocity diagram and can be directly applied to any sliders. For example, this slider H, now we know, is moving towards left relative to the fixed guide with this much of speed. For the angular velocity of any link, for example this link g h, we will take its velocity image g h and divide it by its own length. For its sense, we look at how h is moving relative to g. Since it is moving downward like this, so it is moving downward, it suggests a clockwise direction. This needs to be done for the remaining links as well.